Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India lecture series on bioenergy. So, we are in module 3 which is the biofuels and the third lecture of that section where we are supposed to cover 15 lectures uh, talking about how the biofuels are made in biological systems especially in the plants, algae and all other green forms and uh, next step will be how they are being converted. So, as a part of it in the last two classes we have talked about the beginning of the dark reaction where we have talked about uh, carbon dioxide, single carbon molecule attaching to a 5 carbon molecule and then making a 6 carbon intermediate which breaks down into 2, 3 carbon molecule. This is where we concluded the class. And the enzyme which is uh, orchestrating this whole reaction is called Rubisco. So, today we will briefly talk about Rubisco and uh, the structure of Rubisco and different aspect of Rubisco. To start off with, let us uh, take a recap where we ended the last class. So, this was the last, uh, this was the last drawing I made in the previous class where you can see C 5 plus C making a C 6 and C 3 and C 3. Okay. So, so, interestingly if you look at it, so what Rubisco is doing it is carrying out, a, so I forgot to mention the energetics of it if you look at it. So, basically it is carrying out a very high very high exorgonic reaction whose delta G if you look at it is around minus 12.4 kilocalorie per mole. Okay. And in the last cast we talked about Rubisco is located on the stromal surface. Okay. And uh, as I have already mentioned, this is one of the most uh, abundant protein and one of the key abundant enzyme in chloroplast. And Rubisco in chloroplast is consists of chloroplast is consist of eight large subunit, eight large uh, SU, which is the subunit, each consisting of 55 kilo Dalton, each L is equal to 55 kilo Dalton. That is the molecular weight of it, and eight small subunit where 8 small subunits each subunit consists of 13 kilo Dalton of proteins involved in it. Okay. And each L chain contains a catalytic site and a regulatory site. So, each one second here yeah, this L chain has one catalytic site and a regulatory site. This is critical as we will talk about how they get activated. And uh, another important thing which is worth mentioning here is that the S chain 
enhance the catalytic activity of L chain. Enhance the catalytic activity of L chain. In other word, S chain is helping the N chain, L chain to carry out its catalytic activity and the enzyme is very abundant in chloroplast comprising almost of 16 percent of the total proteins which are available in it and in fact Rubisco is the most abundant enzyme and probably the most abundant protein in the biosphere. Large amount of it is present in, but it is very interesting here it is noteworthy it is a very it is called as a very slow enzyme. Why is it called a slow enzyme? It is called a slow enzyme because its catalytic rate if you look at its catalytic rate it is very stunningly slow. It has a catalytic rate of 3 per second. This is the catalytic rate of Rubisco which is amazingly slow. Now, the it is very interesting to note that though Rubisco is helping, this is something you have to understand, though Rubisco is helping in attaching one carbon dioxide to a 5 carbon ring, it is very paradoxical that Rubisco itself needs a carbon dioxide to get activated. So, you are realizing the situation. So, just think of it. So, you have CO2 of your reaction plus water this is the basic reaction we are talking about CH2ON which is your carbohydrate and oxygen. Okay. Now, this is the reaction what we are now dealing with. Interestingly, this carbon dioxide not only forming this, this is also playing a role in activating the enzyme Rubisco, which is leading to this CO2 reduction to CH2O. Okay. So, it has a dual role, but then how it does? Now, what we will talk about is how Rubisco actually functions and what are those act active site activation of Rubisco. So, let us move on and Right, a little bit further down, yeah. So, talking about Rubisco, so this is how the Rubisco looks like. So, the enzyme is converted into catalytically active form by the addition of CO2. So, so it has a uncharged amino acid residue, epsilon amino acid of Rubisco. Okay. So, let me put it all together for your basic understanding. Okay, so the enzyme is converted to a catalytically active form by addition of so keep an eye on this by addition of CO2 to an epsilon amino acid of a specific lysine residue. Okay. I'll put the reaction together, but before I put the reaction for you, this is very interesting for you to understand to form a carbamate. So, this carbamate is formed and this carbamate this negatively charged adduct. So, basically carbamate is a negatively charged adduct. This 
negatively charge adapt then binds uh, this is the third set of reaction which happen then binds a uh, divalent magnesium or a uh, divalent manganese to form a positively charged metal collets, positively charged center or metal collets. Okay. The bound metal ion, so this is the most critical thing and I wish you guys kindly take a close look on this. The bound metal ion serves as an electron sink this is critical during serves as electron sink during catalysis so there are two kind of co2 which are involved one co2 which is forming ch2on and there is another kind of co2 which is activating rubisco so in this whole equation of things there are two forms of carbon dioxide and they are totally different from each other one carbon dioxide which is involved in its own reduction whereas the other carbon dioxide is activating rubisco and if you put this reaction together in one screenshot so the reaction will be something like this so you have ch3 so this is that epsilon lysine residue so this is getting activated by that co2 so this is part of the rubisco okay so on addition of co2 this particular epsilon lysine ch2 then you have your nh the other h is replaced by now here is that you have the carboxyl group or this is called a carbamate moiety okay so this was i was trying to explain that before i get to the reaction so this carbamate moiety is getting added out here so this is negatively charged on this you have addition of positively charged either magnesium or manganese coming through you can represent by me2 plus okay what you are getting is this your ch2 sitting there you have the n h and you have the carbon carboxylate group o and on that other o you have 2 plus so this is the metal kilet metal kilet which is the electron sink in this reaction 
So, it is this is how the rubisco which is involved in fixing carbon dioxide also gets activated by another molecule of carbon dioxide. There are two different molecule of carbon dioxide. One is taking part in attaching to a 5 carbon molecule to form a 6 carbon molecule and then getting dissociated to 3 carbon 3 phosphoglycerate. Whereas, the other carbon dioxide is attaching to the Rubisco molecule itself, but not for getting converted, but to activate the Rubisco. So, essentially you need carbon dioxide also for this reaction to take place. Now, having said this, in the last class I highlighted one very interesting point. The, if you remember the what is the name of the Rubisco? Rubisco is carboxylase and oxygenase. Carboxylase and slash oxygenase. And I told you that this is this second part oxygenase is what is very critical about Rubisco. What does that mean? So, we have talked about the carboxylase part in terms of it is addition of carbon dioxide to 5 carbon chain, it assists the process by getting activated by another carbon dioxide. So, you have 2 carbon dioxide, one which is getting converted after adding to a 5 carbon forming a 6 carbon getting split up into 3 phosphoglycerate. Whereas, there is another carbon dioxide molecule which is activating Rubisco itself. But this Rubisco which binds to which converts carbon dioxide can also at that same site binds to oxygen. What does that mean? It means where we are talking about as of now that Rubisco is the enzyme which is involved in taking the carbon dioxide and allowing it to bind to a 5 carbon ring and making it a 6 carbon. So, just follow up. So, this is what we are talking about. So, you have CO2 plus 5 carbon making 6 carbon and then splitting up into 3 carbon, 3 carbon. This whole thing is Rubisco's carboxylase activity. Now, think of it just put in imagination. If it is an oxygenase activity, same O2 plus the 5 carbon and then what happen? This is exactly another set of reaction which Rubisco does because it has oxygenase activity. Now, we will talk about that reaction. So, it means now if I put it in the broader perspective of thing, if you remember the first reaction when we talked about H 2 O plus C O 2 forming C H 2 O which is carbohydrate plus oxygen. It means this oxygen is also getting funneled out some way or other because if, if this is because of the Rubisco. Rubisco is doing both things. Rubisco can convert carbon dioxide and what does that mean and what is the significance? This is something very, very important. Okay. So, let us today explore that reaction how Rubisco is actually doing it. We have already explored the reaction in the previous class. Let me go back to that slide. So, this is where we have talked about how this, this addition is taking place. Okay. Now, all of you recollect. So, this is that reaction where you have the C 5 and making the NNDL complex intermediate and followed by and this NNDL intermediate is helped by basically the Rubisco itself. Now, from the NNDL com complex we talk about forming the 6 carbon hydrated intermediate once again this hydrated intermediate and of course, then splitting up into two different 3 phosphoglycerate. 
Now, we will talk about a different reaction on the same line. Okay. Now, this reaction is very interesting. So, again let us start off with the first molecule C H 2 O P O 3 2 minus C there is a ketone here second position hydroxyl in the third position again a hydroxyl on the third position and then you have C H 2 O P O 3 2 minus. So, this is your ribulose 1 5 bisphosphate. Okay. Now, again the same formation the enidiol complex which is C H 2 O P O 3 2 minus C O H. So, the change is happening out here on the second carbon complex and then you have C O H. Okay. Then similarly O H H and you have C H 2 O P O 3 2 minus. So, this is your NADL complex. NADL intermediate. Okay. Next, now instead of carbon dioxide, we are introducing oxygen because this is what Rubisco can do. Now, how the reaction will proceed? <coughs> reaction will proceed like this CH2O. CO 3 2 minus. Now, keep an eye what is happening here O O H. Okay. O H is a ketone group C O H is a H out here and then of course, you have 2, 3, 4, 5 and then you have C H 2 O P O 3 2 minus. So, this one is basically hydro peroxide intermediate and this hydro peroxide intermediate eventually breaks down to H 2 O 2 H plus H 2 O. Okay. And what you get is two different kind of molecule from here coming underneath it. Okay. So, what you are getting is something called a Phosphoglycolate, which is CH2O, CH2O, PO3, 2 minus, and plus you have carbon, oxygen, oxygen, C, OH. H C H 2 O P O 3 2 minus and this is your the original molecule 3 phosphoglycerate. But if you look at it you realize that you are no more getting 2 phosphoglycerate what you are getting is 1 phosphoglycerate molecule and 1 phosphoglycolate what is happening to it and what is the significance of this reaction. This reaction is essentially is <coughs> what we call as a process which is kind of negates the carboxylase effect 
of Rubisco. And you can also term it as right, something like this. So, it is something like an as it is being said, it is an catalytic imperfection. where Rubisco catalyzes a wasteful oxygenase reaction. And which is the reason for photo respiration. So, this imperfect nature of Rubisco reduces the efficiency of carbon sequestration. So, I will close in here, I will expect you guys to ponder over it, think over it, how the same enzyme which is doing such a wonderful thing of converting carbon dioxide into long chain carbon moieties by reduction process is also doing a reverse thing by attaching. Why nature made it like that? What are the implications of it? And from here, how, what are the salvage pathways? So, from here what will move? So, now since I have introduced you to the Rubisco as I promised you, the by third class will introduce you to the Rubisco. And we have talked about the carboxylase already you have carboxylase reaction we have already talked in the previous class today we just kind of went through it and then we talked about the oxygenase reaction <coughs> and we have introduced the concept there is a respiration also happening. So, <coughs> technically if you think of what is happening is CO2 <coughs> plus H2O CH2O N plus oxygen and this oxygen is further getting converted to some something. So, this getting converted is what we are talking about the respiration is also happening here. And whereas, another interesting thing what we have talked about today is that whereas, CO2 is getting converted into carbohydrate this there is another CO2 which is activating Rubisco. And it is the same Rubisco which is consuming oxygen. So, it is a very complex equation nature has developed. On one hand, it developed Rubisco which converts carbon dioxide to carbohydrate. On the other hand, for the activation of Rubisco itself, it needs carbon dioxide. Up to that, it is all fine, but the Rubisco is also an oxygenase. Why nature did it? What made nature to follow such an intricate thing? We do not know or is it nature is perfecting itself, maybe through ages it is perfecting itself, maybe it has reached to this point. We do not know, we really do not have an answer to this. But what are the implications? We will talk about it in the next class, where we will talk about how this photorespiration and what are the cyclic process of Kelvin. We will come back to the Kelvin cycle, the whole cycle we will talk about how the three carbons are getting converted into the hexose and the starch and all those things, the formation of the starch, C3 and C4 pathways. Okay? I will close in here. Thank you. Thank you.